Wait on set. Okay. Okay. Tarot Documentary presents Filming in Thailand, a podcast for movie lovers with exclusive stories from behind the scenes. Rolling sound. Sound rolling. And action. Hi, I'm your host Stéphane Lambert, and this is a new episode of Filming in Thailand. Here we are. This is a new episode of Filming in Thailand uh, with our guest Kunchacha Ketnost, also known as Kunnat. So welcome and thank you for joining us today. Yes, uh, welcome and oh, thank you so much, Stéphane, for having me here. Uh, first of all, Kunnat, yes. are you filming in Thailand? Yes, we're filming in Thailand and in neighboring country like Myanmar as well. Yeah, and hopefully we can make a journey more in other country as well. I could not. So you've been a director for many decades already in Thailand. Um, you're one of the owners of White Light Studio. Yes. Your production house, I think named Magenta Films. Yes. Um, has been involved in many world-class films such as uh, Call Me By Your Name, mm -hmm. uh, Love at Concain. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, from uh, Bangkok to Mandalay and many more that we will discuss yeah. during this, uh, this show. You were born in Thailand, in Udon Thani. Yes. Um, and there was almost no, no movie, no films, no cinema there. Uh, no. Actually, there's a lot. And um, actually, I think the Udon Thani background is um, is is um, is connect to the world during the Cold War. Okay. So we have a GI base camp and have the very advanced air bit during okay. the Vietnam War. And at the time, the the established. Were you born? Udon Thani. But were you born during the yeah. Vietnam War? No, 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 no. Oh. I, I am <laughs> later after that. But 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 when I grew up. In a what leaders, I still can see uh, some uh, like uh, architecture style and uh, some of the cinema that has a long history. So like I mean, I mean that the theater we have uh, uh, legendary we start theaters which is now closed, mm -hmm. but at the time it show during the Vietnam War it show seventy millimeters film. Oh, footprints! So that's uh, fantastic, and and we experience some of the the the, the movie they have uh, upstairs straw that uh, ceiling with the uh, glass okay so that is the soundtrack room so that means they present the movie with the original soundtrack Ooh. in that room and they have a uh, downstairs for the tied up and this is how you you start discovering uh, cinema movies. um actually the, um, my, my time is uh, a two decades later and um but but all the all the standalone cinema at that time, they still have the soundtrack room, but it's not sure anymore because uh, the the base American base already removed. But uh, have to say like uh, Udon is so uh, is a city of people love movies. What would best describe what you are actually involved in today? Uh, actually, like um, uh, my, I think what what involving me is um. This is always my dreams to, okay. be, to be a film director since I was film director. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um. Actually, I I I love films since I was um in the like the eight or seven years old. Keep keep watching the movie and keep following up news newspaper. What kind of movies were were you, were you watching at that time when we were um, born? Actually, this um uh it's a uh, you 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 say it's like an open air. Cinema, you know, it's you know, people walking by. In it's Thai, it's like it's, Nam Nam Kam Plang. Yes, Nam Kam Plang. Nam Kam yeah, and uh, and then like uh, my first film I, I saw in the theater at the daytime. Okay. Uh, uh, it's uh, called Nam Pu, Story of Nam Pu, Jutana Mukdasanit, the film. Uh, and um, many at the time we had been influenced by Hong Kong film. Mm. Yeah, okay. a lot of the Joe and Fa and uh, Tony Lien Chow Wei. Yeah, and um, I'm a big fan of, of that. And then later with John Woo's and yeah, Jackie Chan, of course. So action movies, action, a lot of fighting. Yeah, but, but at the same time, the, um, 
my my brother uh, he really a uh, uh, big fan of platoons and they watch platoon who uh, was the director of platoon can you remind us uh oliver stone of course but at the time i don't know who is oliver stone <laughs> because I'm, I'm i'm very little but but the thing is is um you know when we're talking about american war in vietnam the, um we don't have any idea because um you know it, it's like a secret warfare between the and that's what i realized later with be the cia did american down probably just stop it's quite interesting you said american war uh, in the us they said the vietnam war <laughs> um yeah maybe, maybe the later i maybe i, I shift my perspective and uh, we don't know much about the vietnams the, for the last three decades mm-hmm. because we I think we, even though we are far away from American, but we you are know, from from the state. But actually, like uh, we pretty much uh, uh, influenced by the American media. I have a special quote for you. Listen to that one. No matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. Does it ring a bell? Yes. Do you know from where I took this quote? I don't know. I took it from, I believe, is one of your favorite movies, Dead Poet Society. Oh, yes. This is John Kitty, played by uh, late Robin Williams, yeah, yeah, yeah. directed by Peter Well, and written by Tom Schulman. What is your take on that thought? Um, can, can I like go back like when I first have a chance to watch this? Do I need to rewind? Or? Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> before I... I, I please, please. Says to, to this one. Um, because Udon Hani is, uh, um, because, uh, you know, Thailand is like, uh, Bangkok is a central light and it's just like uh, only one metropolis. Sure, it's out, and kind of outshine yeah, the, all the other cities. So Udon is very, like, uh, outside and it is very hard for a movie that, like, Dead Poet Society mm-hmm. to be show. And it's not show uh, with the normal way. Uh, it had been shown by the, the organization called Lion or something. Ah, uh, the Lions Club. Yeah, the Lions Club. Kind of charity. Yeah, yeah. Project charity. Mm-hmm. And um, usually, like after school, I like make a make a straw to the cinema, just watching the poster. And and on that day, it happened to show this film. And I say, oh, but let, let me can I watch it? And they said, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. And um, I donate some money and I watch it. And okay. And it's so good. And it like um. Uh, uh, at the time, I'm 12. Okay. So you were quite impressed by this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be- because it's about education and, you know, education in Thailand is just like in the film. <laughs> 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 I, I can connect right away. Which and, part? The part with the, the relationship with the teacher or the part where all the students are standing up on the table? <laughs> <test? laughs> I think we all want to stand up <laughs> and go on the table. But this not happened in the real life. So I, I, I uh, come back home and and it make me think about what should be my future. And, okay. and that keep me two years later. I, I found the answer. Like, ah, I want to be a filmmaker. Already when you were like 12, 15 years old, you knew that you wanted to be a filmmaker. I, I, I certainly commit to it. Uh, when but I feel 14. What was your idea at that time of, of being a filmmaker? What? what as a boy, what what did you think it was to be a filmmaker? Uh, I think like like all other kids, we don't know like uh, making a film. This involved with many uh, many uh, specialists sure. and many professionals, uh, but uh, we know for sure they're gonna be directors <laughs> or actor. And of course, I don't want to be an actor. So okay. yeah, I should be in the, the director. And your idea of a director was what? The the big boss, the captain of the ship? The wh- What was it about for I, you that was I attracting think, you to being a film director? Um, I think uh, I I perceive it like uh, it's the guy who uh, to putting all the art together. Literature, music, uh, storytelling, uh, cinematography, photography, and acting as well. Mm-hmm. So so the, this guy has to have all the knowledge. Okay. They, they, they can. And you were interested by this, yeah. this approach, yeah. so this idea. Back to our quote, um, uh, extract from Dead Poet Society, the movie you like so much. 
Um, and what we learn is that after watching this movie, you decided to be a director. So that's quite, quite an important starting point. So do you believe, do you agree with uh, uh, Tom Schulman writing that words and ideas can change the world? Yes, I I'm, I'm truly believe. And uh, I have to say, like, uh, the, from that day that I was 14 until now, it's uh, 30 years later, I have to say, like, uh, I'm more and more convinced by this idea. And um, the, I, I'm still making a movie with this idea. And uh, that, that's why, the, from my, my work the, with Burma, mm -hmm. from Bangkok to Manila up until from Chabaya to Ayurveda, it's all about making people my shame in the better understanding. Better of an uh, understanding of each other. Of each other. And uh, crossing races and uh, all the conflict. You're using your films to bring people together, to create bridges between different culture, different uh, way of living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, because of, like we, we saw like propaganda films by René Leffen style and many artists filmmaker in, in the Cold War period <laughs> uh, and numerous film directors are of those stuff. So I think like a uh, film is uh, not, not just film, but art or we make an impact to the society. It is very like a socialist idea. Sorry, but <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but, but I think it's this influence so, all of us. So, so, do, so do you believe that's why uh, there is so much censorship on art from governments? in general, not to be particular, mm -hmm. that want to control the society or the, um, you know, the, the, the narrative mm -hmm. um, by censoring the art. Can it, can, is this possible to have an art uh, that um, is outside censorship? I, I think like, um, um, I, I think censorship need, like, uh, but it, it no need. If in, in the future that um, we have, uh, I mean, people have uh, layers and have a different background mm -hmm. and like um, some people just, you know, like uh, what they like uh, splitting on uh, social network every day. And uh, even though some of the film reveals today, not film critic, like it's uh, just like a trolling shit just to make the name out of it. Mm -hmm. So all of these things is go, you know, is go freely and uncontrolled. And some maybe people make a title out of it, but at the end they usually like end up because they cannot keep continue lying to the society. Sure. But um, I have to say it's like um, um, for for me that we this year I'm forty five, so. I have to say, it's like, it's, it's not You're about... You're so much younger than me. <laughs> sorry. It's not fair. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, I cannot do anything about that too. It is, it's not about like, right or wrong, left or right anymore for, for me. So it's more it's like uh, taking the currents and how to balance mm -hmm. it. So the, um, if it's the, the censorship is too much and not logical, I think that that's not fair and it's not good for anyone. Uh, but if it's like a, something like a red thing, it's like oh, the, 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 the younger generation, the, like before I don't like Disney, I am okay. more like a, a DreamWorks boy. But after I have son, it's like mm, Disney is not bad at all because they they didn't know the nature of the kid mm -hmm. and uh, something they they not so much complicated and so much not so much logical at this stage. <laughs> Are, are you advocating for more diversity, more equality of through course. your films? Of course, of course. In not just the diversity in terms of races, but gender as well. And um, I think we we want our generation, I mean, I, our kid, to um, to become uh, not just the population of the country, but uh, they become a global citizen mm -hmm. that belong to just one country because if we think about our own country uh, so there's going to be you know like a difference and and conflict and more and more but if they, they think like this we have only one world to share and we have to no matter what we have sure whatever we do one planet is connect and it's reflect and it affect others life on earth as well <laughs>
So I have your filmography here with me, and it's quite impressive. What would be the the films you would recommend our our listeners and our viewers to watch to understand your work better? Mm. You mean my film? Your your own film. I think uh, I think there's two film. The is the the only mom. Okay, horror movie. Yeah, the horror movie. Based in Myanmar. Based in Myanmar, and the Chapaja Yodi. But if we have this conversation uh, next year, I can recommend the one that's about to coming out. Uh, it's called Peruang. So, um, at the time of the broadcasting of the of this podcast, I think your latest film Man Swang mm-hmm. was a huge success. Yes. Um, will be available widely uh, online, probably. And there will be another one uh, called Paruang. Paruang. What, yeah. what is it about? Uh, actually, it's about um, when 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 Thai people think about our origin, uh, we, we go back to Sukhothai. Okay, Sukhothai is a very important place. Yeah, but, but actually our history is longer than that, but... From the narrative point of view, it's usually like a begin take the Sukhothai as the beginning, and um, the, the reason that I think that film can reflect my work and my and my life the most is because of its mix uh, between like a film narrative and uh, theatrical as well. Because I have theater background. Okay. I I studied uh, theater during the university time, and I joined the uh, outside university theater group. Like uh, Crescent Moon Theatre and uh, and Atavari Theatre. The the fact that you studied theatre has influenced the way you're directing your actors on set. Uh, actually, I think um, yes and no. And um, yes, because of our, uh, uh, we actually theatre and film sharing the deep same background to get there. It's like a spade. We have spade and we have story, mm-hmm. and then we have actor, and then film is my technical. That came later after the technology. Sure. Uh, film the uh, recording the uh, moving image technologies came, so then the other move to film. But uh, deep down, act structure, hero journey, I think it's the same thing, uh, happening over and over. And because of uh, our brain, usually like uh, don't want any space. So if there is some space that they don't know, we usually fill up with our imagination. So so that's why the theater and film is the same thing as a blackboard. The people peering into somebody's life. But it's just the medium that, that changed. So for, for, for me, film and theater, nothing different. But can we say, would you agree if I say that uh, uh, during a play, what matters is the the performance of the actor mm-hmm. uh, during a film. Mm-hmm. What matters is the performance of the director. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. The the, the thing is, it's it's more like it. It's like a, um, in the theater, there's no editing, and no camera angle, and it's live. Yeah, and it's live, it, and and the angle has to create, pacing, and to project, you know, to make sure that. The audience in that space. If the big theater, they have to project their acting into the, you know, the 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 back seat, mm-hmm. the final sure. seat. But uh, for for film lens and cinematography and camera work, take care of that. So no matter what in in film, when acting for film, they just focus on themselves mm-hmm. and on that moment and on that reality, and let the camera they do the job close up, extreme close up, micro camera movement of those things. But for theater, they cannot do that. Only leave everything to the act. The people that are influencing your work today, are they the same as uh, the one that influenced your work at the beginning of your career? And who, who are they? Who is Who influenced your work today? Ah, interesting. Yeah, I, I think it, it changes. But I think... Like, uh, yeah, the Dead Poet Society directors, Peter Weir, mm-hmm. influenced me a lot in the beginning, and then John Woo. John Woo. <laughs> yes. and, 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 yeah, and I think um, it's, and, um, 
what can I say? Can I say so like it is? It changes. Uh, but uh, this one guy, I'm really appreciate. Okay. Clint Eastwood. Okay, that's that's a big jump from you know John Wood to Clint Eastwood. Yeah. And um, can you explain? I actually, when when I little kid, uh, I know him as like a like a westerns, but I'm not at the time when he famous because it's during my uh, teenage. That is not a good time for for the western film. And then I uh, very like surprised by Unforgiven. Okay. And and this so well done script and and many things. And then he keep doing fantastic thing after that, Million Dollar Baby, and um, Grand Torino, and and the Bridge of Madison County. So this guy can do any genre. Sure. And he act himself, which is not bad at all. <laughs> so good. And and I I love the Bridge of Madison County a lot. And this film influenced me to do uh, Bangkok to Manila. To be confessed, yeah, really? To be yeah. Okay. Is there so, any similarities? Oh, and a lot. If uh, if you go back and watch it, there's been a lot. You like so much. You are inspired by the work of Clint Eastwood as a director, but as a as an actor. What about Clint Eastwood? Uh, he he did a fantastic job. I I like him a lot on the um, Million Dollar Baby, like yeah, uh, trainer. He's so into it, and um, from Grand Torino, and I, I, and and he don't pretend he he old man, and he don't pretend that he's still you know a hero. So the, this, you know, I'm so much respects him there on this, because sometimes I saw like many actor and actress in Thailand, uh, they getting old, but they're still like singing the love song, and they say, like, "What the death? You are you're like a grandpa to me." No, no names, <laughs> no, no name, no name. No name. <laughs> Do you remember this famous line um, that Clint Eastwood was always saying in his Dirty Harry movies? <laughs> <laughs> so I would well, like you to look at the camera, uh -huh. this one, uh -huh. and say, "Go ahead, make my day." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go ahead, make my day. You are listening to Filming in Thailand, a podcast by Tarot Documentary, with your host, Stefan Lambert. I have a quote for you from Jean-Luc Godard, you know, this uh, famous uh, director from the Nouvelle Vague in France. He says, Cinema is the most beautiful fraud in the world. What do you think about that? Absolutely agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love French cinema. So let's now uh, talk about your involvement with the, uh, you know, a content industry, content world, movie industry <laughs> in Thailand. You, um, through your, your work uh, as a pioneer and as a co-founder of, of White Light, um, you've been involved uh, into so many independent project, not yours, but from other people, not other directors, other producers. Mm -hmm. um, and what would you say that is so specific about Thai cinema? Um, I think Thai cinema is the real survivor. And um, basically, I don't give a shit about the the work that become popular at the moment, soft, soft power. Oh, soft power, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't give a shit about that. You are more for hot power or no power? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because we survived our own. Mm -hmm. We we make film like a masturbation ourselves. So that's how the, how the Thai industry grew up, without any support from the government. Masturbating. Yeah, just the masturbating. <laughs> and, 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 and why like it's just like that? Because at the time, films is... Uh, very technical, you know, chemicals, and is is the most expensive art form in the world. Cinema. Yeah, so that's why it came across with industry. When we talked about cinema, and the economy, uh, movie industry, cinema industry, and um, it's very hard to have a lab that can answer to the independent spirit and and can support the independent the mind to grow. Because most of the independent filmmakers, they usually make their own first films. And um, 
they will be success in the future if they can make the first one very honest mm-hmm. uh, to 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 their mind. And uh, if you don't have a good uh, lab that can answer trial and error and understand, like a not perfect, first so has this, a new way of seeing things or, or their own way. So this is how uh, White Light started. White Light, for those who are not so familiar with White Light, is, is a, a post-production studio, is a color grad- mainly color grading, editing, consumption. Yes, like a more, more like a post-production solution. <laughs> How did it start? How did you start? Actually, it started from the Siyompu Mukti Prom, the legendary DOP, world-class DOP at the moment. Uh, Siyompu, the, um, the 13 years ago, uh, during the, we, the, the digital films, digital camera become like a better, I mean, and not, not this good, but it can replace film in the future. And then we, we, we see the good and the bad thing about this technology. And we think it's a good opportunity to create our lab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's make it not so expensive. So then the, the filmmaker can engage to it and can 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 finish their film. And do you remember who was the first what was the first film that ever came to White Light? I think yeah, yeah um The first film is from Kun Pong Pat Vachira Ban Chong. Um, Not familiar with Kun Kun Pat. Yeah, but everybody in Thailand, especially this building, know. <laughs> Kun Pong Pat is the uh, <laughs> director of Naki, the uh, legendary director, and, and he's an actor before. And um, the first film is called The Dog, Shing uh, Ma Third. Because Yom Pu shot that one, and uh, uh, Kun Pong Pat uh, is very trust. Like a trap, the uh, very much. So we got the chance. So the film shot in uh, digital red camera. Okay. And we processing in digital, and we output in into films. Yeah. So the, without his trap, so we don't have the first feature film. Camera. So that was the first feature film uh, ever coming going through uh, white light. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Go back in the beginning. Siyumpu asked me like we can, we can create a lab. And with, with all the knowledge uh, that in, in the world, uh, we, we can we can do that. Um, I'm like uh, 70% believe him, but I need another 30% to fill up. So okay. the only guy that I can trust is Lee Shatak Metikun Pili at the moment. So I I asked Pili, like, hmm, Pili, Pisong, uh, have an idea to build a lab? Are you like, how do you think so? Then we. We, we meet up and then like uh, we sharing uh, thought and idea and then we think like okay we pretty much ready to go and at the time uh Pili making his first film uh concrete cloud yeah so and that that's gonna be the second film uh, come out from from waylight yeah and after uh Pili finished his films I make a journey to Burma <laughs> to to make my own film so that was the third film <laughs> no, no, no. We sh- so many, so many in between. <laughs> okay. In between. How many films have you been involved in so far? I don't remember. I ne- never count. But uh, oh, I, I, I direct a film. But uh, you directed three... what? Ten films? No, 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 no. Not the films and series. Films and series. I think altogether it's like five or six. But <laughs> but you're you're so present. You're. You're so much involved into the, the, the Thai film scene that it seems that you've been, you know, making films for so long already. Yeah, because I'm the, my, my first job in film industry is like a post uh, coordinator. Okay. So that's the long, long time ago, the scene, the GTH day one. Okay, that, that's the... GTH, the, yeah. the production house. Yeah, and uh, GTH, uh, I have a very good mentor, the P. Finn, Kun Chen Chun which is train me. And um, I just enjoy go to lab, you know, see celluloids and film print, optical print. <laughs> Out of all the films you've been seeing going through your desk, uh, th- through White Light, through your Magenta production house, uh, do you do you see some of the films that are more significant than others? Mm. Mm. Significant for you, significant for the movie industry in general? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I think two things. Two things. 
uh, first is like a yes, uh, Abhishek Pong films always like uh, on top of everything, and like uh, he opened the way to see things differently, and he is like a king to the Thai independent world. He got the Palme d'Or in Cannes. He was yeah. president of the jury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even though I am not uh, much like a work closely with him, but uh, you know, my partner and my staff working closely with him. And um, and from another perspective, it's like uh, um, Thailand has a good team to do animation. And uh, five years ago, we finished uh, Nai Satra, mm-hmm. which is very good uh, in terms of our production. And this year, we have uh, the new animations coming out, and we had a chance to collaborate with them. It's called uh, the Manta Warrior. Okay, it's an animation. This animation is going to be premiered the next week. In it next week, and uh, I have to say, like, uh, it is like a world class work by Thai people, and um, we have a very good sound studio, the uh, Kendana Sound Studio by Kun Trai Thay, which is uh, he, he he himself is artist. Okay, so Wai Lai and and Kun Trai Thay Kendana Sound Studio is the same. You know, we we. We are a filmmaker, and he's the sound engineer, and and he's a musician as well. He's an artist, and then he run the company and train a hundred staff. Sound is 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 sometimes said uh, to be the weak point of the industry in Thailand. But... No, of course not. The weak part is the investor. <laughs> okay, they don't have got to pay. If they if they pay. Let's talk about your your huge success that that is uh, Man Swan. Uh-huh, uh-huh. um, how many how many people went to sit in the cinema so far? I think I think the I don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> roughly, Can, cannot roughly, work. roughly, um, because it's a big number. I think around four hundred thousand at least, which is a lot for a. I mean, which is a big. Anyway, it's a big success. Yes, it's a big success. And um, if you look at uh, other Thai films, it's a huge success. <laughs> for, yeah, for for so how to say like uh, after the COVID situation, and uh, after online platform situation, and um, after the Thai film industry downfall, I have to say like um, it's remarkable success. Why do you think people are? Going to the cinema, spending the money to go to the cinema to watch your film, the, this last film, I, this film. I think um, film is the you have to pay. It's not like you can watch television for free in your homes, or you just pay monthly subscribe, and like uh, you have to commit two hours with us uh-huh. in the dark room. And um, so that's quite an investment for people, not not yeah. only in, in terms of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, a lot of investment, money and time for sure. And um, so it's like a bet. And um, we have to make them believe we are truly contribute. Mm-hmm. We commit to make a, a high standard film. And and in that film, when they go and watch it, they appreciate. Um, at least it's like a mind close. It has to have a good style, a good texture, a good fabric. Make them feel better. Yeah, make them feel better. What's the story about uh, this this film in a few words? Uh, actually, like um, we go back like a hundred years ago, when, when the country facing you know a shaking of the throne, and and, and so many things, many uh, inconsistent, and we don't know what what is the future is, and there's a uh, uh, small two two people mm-hmm. that they run into the trouble. They have to find out who is behind, who is about to take the throne. You know, take the coup, whatever. Yeah. How did how did you get this story? Actually, I think it's um uh, it it from the Beyond Cloud. Uh, Kun Pon. He want to make a period uh, about the dancer, the a hundred years ago, and uh, he. He loved nightclub. He enjoy nice life, and we talk about we believe in the past there gonna be some 
place like this. <laughs> a very gray play area, like a gambling, okay. uh, prostitution, party, drinkers, all of those stuff. Because that does people, not exist in Thailand today. Actually, they always exist. And this kind of thing always make money. And maybe 30% of our income is from this gray industry. We have to admit it. But we never, because we are Buddhist. You mean Thailand general, in general, in general, not, general, not, not general. your income. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not my income. <laughs> no, no, not my income. I wish I could have that. <laughs> Here is a series of, of 10 questions you can answer by yes or no exclusively. Are you ready? Yes or no, only, right? Only. Yes. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, 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 we could. Okay. okay, we start. Yes, okay. The yes or no questions. The yes or no questions. What's your name? Nat. I say yes or no. Uh, uh, <laughs> I got you. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here are the, the 10 questions. Okay, I, rem I remind you, um, yes or no only. Okay. okay, here we go. Yes. No. Uh, have you directed a feature film that has won an Academy Award? No. Have you directed a film with a budget exceeding 100 million? No. Have uh, any of your films been box office successes? Yes. Ah, one yes. Do you have a signature visual style or storytelling approach? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you directed a film that has become a cult classic? Not yet. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> From Bangkok to Mandalay is, is becoming a cult classic. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't think it's that cult. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more. Have you worked on international film productions? Yes. Have you directed which one? The yes. Last one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you directed adaptations of popular novels or other source material? No. no. Have you worked on project with tight shooting schedules? Yes. Have you? And was it successful? Of every time, come on, <laughs> every film. <laughs> Have you directed films that were shot on location around the world? Mm. I can say yes for you. Huh? Yes, yes, I think so. <laughs> Have you ever directed a documentary or a non-fiction film? Yes. And um, did you like it? Yes. <laughs> So no more yes and no, but which which documentary uh, did you did you work on? Uh, actually, it's it's very local, and actually the, it's for very for Thai people. It's called Biodia. Okay. Actually, like uh, during I uh, make a research and scouting location for um, Bangkok to Manila, I um, I have a um, question like there's so many many lot arts in Myanmar. So lost Thai art. Lost Thai art in Myanmar. Thai, yeah, lost Thai artists and lost Thai artwork in Myanmar. And then I dig deeper and we just realized like a, uh, after we lost the war, they collect the people from Ayutthaya and build the city in Inwa. Inwa. Yeah, and, and they, they bring our Thai art school. We have 10 category Thai art school, Chang Sip Mo. And then they, they move to Myanmar and then they extend their work and they continue to develop their work in the way, in the Myanmar way. In the Myanmar way. If you have the prisoner of war, if you just like uh, containing them and if you don't like uh, uh, categorize them, you know, somebody could have labor, somebody could have, uh, somebody could mm -hmm. set the match, sure. somebody could have, you know, many things. So uh, they, they're not stupid. They catalyze people. If they are good in govern govern people, they send to the urban just to build a town. So then they can collect tax. Mm -hmm. But if they are artists, just let them work. Let them like uh, develop. That, that that could be something uh, any director could tell producers. Let them work. Yes, let them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe that local content um, can have global appeal? Um, I'm more than 100% believe. Okay. Because um, the, um, the, the, the local, they can go global. They have to win the local people first. Mm -hmm. They have to win their own market first. And by they win their own market, and, uh, and then they will have uh, their own ingredient that artists, Hollywood, and friends, and Korean don't have. 
they have a you know a very unique flavor. So this is the only way that they can win global elections. Are you getting in um, support enough support, if any, from the Thai authorities to to make it on the world stage? I think in the past, no, and uh, they they're trying so hard now. But uh, I have to say, like it's not that easy. It took time, and um, but you're getting support now. Um, little, little yeah. by little, little by little. I, I think because of uh, we are more know how to correlate with them. In the past, it's really divided. Can we say that you're an, indep an independent filmmaker when basically no one is watching the film and the mm -hmm. day you start to connect with the audience and to build an audience, you're not independent anymore? The, the thing is, um, why life is not like that. Like uh, in the beginning, like uh, I, I discussed this topic with Lee like, uh, because I'm, I'm from the industrial side. Mm -hmm. And so Yompu himself, he can go, you know, to side. He very, he can shoot commercial. Okay. Shoot blockbuster film. And then he can shoot a piece of film. He can shoot Luca film. He can shoot Ron Howard film. So um, actually, like, uh, we, 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 we just love a movie and we don't have boundary. We, we don't, uh, we enjoy genre, good genre of film. So if for us, it's just good film and bad film. In the independent film, there's so many lames, you know, independent as well, you know. Okay. Like a doctor, you see the doctor, it doesn't mean that they are good or they miss time. Like that. No, we don't know we, before. We don't know. We don't know. So it's, I think the same thing happened. But uh, our passion is fame. And then our passion on the picture side, yeah, we, we just try to, to build the lab that uh, answer to the technology and answer to the filmmaker. And um, that, that's why we are number. We are the first one when Netflix and Amazon came. We are the first company that do the original for them. You are listening to Filming in Thailand, a podcast by Tarot Documentary, with your host Stefan Lambert. We we just lost Gunnar. He's coming back. Please put your, your clothes back on. <laughs> <laughs> You're drinking a lot, but only water. <laughs> so disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said uh, uh, you need more investors. Yes, investor and producer. Mm -hmm. These two things are different. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So you need more investors. More investor and more producer. Producer in terms of not investor, but the real producer. That because most what money, do you mean real producer? You mean bringing money to the project or make it happen? Make it happen because they are producing the film, and the investor they invest. Mm -hmm. uh, many time and most of them don't have any idea how film made. Investors, investor don't have. So you need the producer in between the investors and the the creative team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise. How can they directly talk to the investor? You know, we, we are talking about creative AI and now creative mm -hmm. AI. Mm -hmm. um, this influences everybody's way of working, mm -hmm. um, from the research phase to the writing phase, and sometimes to you know the marketing and the distribution of of a, of a content. Uh, where do you see all that fuzz about uh, AI creative leading to? I, I think I always and always think technology is a tool mm -hmm. and it serves the storytelling and then and then the real storytelling will will be human. Is your job too extinct soon? To no, 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 no. Um in, in my life we use more AI. Okay. To to help us to do uh, you know uh repetitive things. Okay. And um they are doing so good. So you mean that uh, AI is not a threat, but is a tool to be better? Even though it's a threat, how can we how can we escape? Here is a, another quote I'd like to run by you. Here it is. The only reason for time is so that everything doesn't happen at once. This is attributed to Albert Einstein asking Marilyn Monroe to a second date. Mm -hmm. Would you like to time travel? Time travel. 
It's a very interesting question. I mean, if you ask me five, five years ago, okay. I'm going to say, like, of course, I won. But from from now, after the, the quantum physics and, and, and everything, and uh, the, this multi-universe things can really somehow exist. And if I travel like in time, I cannot come back here ever again. I would be alone in the studio today. What a shame. <laughs> here is your chance. This is the time traveling machine. I think the, at that time, I'm still studying in university and I'm working with the, the theater outside really a lot. And I, I fall in love with my wife now. But at the time, she's run away from me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chasing after her, basically. So first thing I'm going to tell Nat, don't stop chasing. Sooner or later, you will win. <laughs> and and secondly, about um, about your dream, about film, film make, making, I, I will not tell you anything. <laughs> like, a, I cannot tell you what's going to happen. You just decided with your own. So basically, you would do it again, the way it happened with your own decision you made at that time. I yeah, I I have this kind of conversation in myself many times, uh, even last Friday night. Um, I I think whatever happened, uh, it has a reason, and all the obstacle in life. That is a chance for us to be a better or to choose the wrong one. Do you believe in faith? The, um, Destiny? I don't know. I don't know. That I mean, I, I don't want to know <laughs> about destiny of, of, of faith. And it's like, a, it's like a spoiling new film. No spoiler. No spoiler. No spoiler. What I can say is that um, your films worth watching, and especially for people who want to know more about uh, Thailand, Thai Burmese co exchange culture on the laps. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we will have the list of your films and the link to the trailers and maybe to the film that can be watched online legally <laughs> yes, yes, yes. In, in the comment section. Before we go, I have to offer you the award for best guest ever to Filming in Thailand podcast. <laughs> if Yat uh, wants, uh, is just, okay to give just eight episodes. That is too soon. <laughs> yes. So this is your award for oh. uh, best guest okay. uh, at Filming so in much. Thailand uh, from, from Fiat and oh. all the team. Uh, please open it. It's a beautiful mug. This is the official uh, Bangkok Doc, one of our partners. Oh, yeah. um, official mug. Uh, please use it on set. Send us pictures. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, Kunat, thank you very much. It's been a thrill to have you. Thank you so much, Stefan. It's been a big thrill for me. Okay, people, fantastic. That's a wrap. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefan. That was Filming in Thailand, an original podcast brought to you by Tarot Documentary on Rudy Podcast with your host, Stefan Lombe. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode of Filming in Time. Are you, are you tired? Uh, of course. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He didn't record. We have to start again from scratch. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that will not happen. <laughs>